All right, passengers, Hijack now has several moving pieces, and from the looks and sounds of things, this ain't how the easy, squeezy hijacking was supposed to go down. Either way, we are here to break down everything in this latest episode because this was by far the most chaotic episode and and tense, if you will. So please like and subscribe to ensure your weekly reservation for the kosher meal on J Buck Airlines. You won't regret it. Otherwise, thank you so much for clicking this. Please stay in those seats as meal service is about to start. Hopefully, maybe I'm I'm starving here as we get into episode four of Hijack. So starting things off, our theory about Stuart shooting a passenger appears to be correct, as there's a bullet casing, blood, and a passenger lying on the floor amongst the screaming crowd of other passengers. We had thought that it might have been uh, the scissors-wielding dude, but it turns out to be the young blonde woman who ironically was foreshadowed back in episode 1. A mid-20-year-old yoga influencer type woman who is ironically reading a book called Reasons to Stay Alive, which no doubt spells bad fortune for her. I'm calling it now. I'm assuming any of the passengers had a target on them, but unfortunately she was the one that caught the bullet because she was trying to save the young daughter who had mysteriously gotten up out of her seat in episode 3. I I still don't know about that one. But now the look on Stuart's face is both shock and panic. And this is because later we find out from Lewis that no one was supposed to get hurt during this hijacking. So this makes me believe that the plane was all a big distraction, essentially a big old bluff tying in with the demands at the end of this episode. Another thing that we had guessed last week is Lewis being hurt from the apparent stabbing by the medical scissors. This proves correct, and my man is bleeding out hard. I'm bleeding. I'm saying those tiny scissors are coming back into play in a later episode, but Sam uses this vulnerable position to not only empathize with Lewis, but use those negotiation skills to gain not only information, but to leave Marsha another cryptic message via voicemail. Very slick of him, but on top of that, Sam also finds out Terry's real name, Lewis has a family, and sort of an inkling that he doesn't really want to be doing what he's doing, uh, you know, hijacking the plane. Sam could have easily ended his life and used this to his advantage, but I'm thinking that him saving Lewis with the breathing pen is actually his way of buying good faith with the hijackers, honestly a better advantage than bum-rushing them and potentially more passengers getting hurt. I guess the biggest thing Sam learns is that Stuart does have real bullets. Bang, 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 you're dead. The most tense, uh, tensest, I I don't know, man, part of this episode was by far the air traffic controllers and foreign secretaries race against the clock to stop the jets from shooting them down. Luckily, Captain Robin knew that they were headed straight for Bucharest, Romania, and advised the hijackers of this. But the real MVP in this scene, yes, obviously Captain Robin, but was Colette. If she hadn't opened the window to allow the Jets to see what was happening, everyone would have been in the dark and probably dead. So when she tells the passengers to open up their windows, it's a sign of hope. The light in a rather dark situation and the escalated situation of the Jets is now over with, and this, like, Overall sense of relief can set over everyone in the plane, including the hijackers. It seems Marsha may be stumbling into her own trouble because the cleaners from episode 1 apparently want something with Sam. Well, we, we, we know what they want, you know, pew 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 pew, but, but why? They knocked off Neela and her family, presumably because she allowed for Alec and the guns to just scoot, scoot, scoot right on through security, therefore tying up the loose ends. And now I'm guessing that they want Sam out of the picture for potentially two reasons that obviously tie in with the demands letter at the end of this episode. One is that he was involved in a previous negotiation, potentially business deal, that yielded unfavorable results for someone, either financially or personally, and they are attempting to get revenge. Or the other option is that they want him dead because whatever the bigger plan is, they don't want him and his expertise available to help negotiate with whoever is behind all of this. But the clear problem is that the cleaners have no idea that he was actually out of the country and is currently on the same hijacked plane. So I'm guessing Marsha and her son will unfortunately have to deal with these cleaners in the future episodes. 
Marsha is already home and maybe hides from them while their son returns with his headphones on, doesn't notice them at first, and causes a big old mess. If I'm getting off the rails here with the theories and whatnot, it's because I'm on my fourth cup of coffee right in this. You're, you're welcome, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry! Now, the ending scene with the secretary and demands letter honestly may give us the best guess and first massive piece of the puzzle to figure out what the heck is going on. First, the secretary has basically served some papers. Look forward to speaking. Whatever this is causes him to panic. Luckily, we were able to skim through this scene frame by frame. Enhance. And according to the letter, it states the following. The Home Secretary and members of the UK government to whom it may concern. On the 7th of January 2023, Edgar Jansen and John Bailey Brown were wrongfully imprisoned. As a direct result of this, flight KA-29, time and details listed below, has been hijacked. This is your opportunity to right that wrong. You have the time it takes for the plane to reach London to release these men from prison. Failure to do so, comply with any subsequent instructions, or influence the progress of the plane will result in the death of all 216 people on board. Okay, so we know why someone has orchestrated this hijacking, but there's still two big questions. Who is the mastermind of this whole thing, and who the heck are these two men who were wrongfully imprisoned? Put on those theory caps because I'm saying that Sam accidentally put these two men in jail as a direct result of a business deal turned wrong. I say this because we know the cleaners are looking for him as well, but, but why? He's got to be tangentially connected to them, the imprisoned fellows and the world of negotiations. So maybe Sam advised against a merger because he figured that these two men were corrupt and therefore an investigation was formed resulting in the pair being jailed. I also say it's some sort of business deal because of Alec's involvement. He had a count of tax fraud on his record, which would then connect him to the business world, maybe even the soured business negotiation that resulted in the pair being imprisoned. It doesn't seem like he wants to be on the flight, despite supplying the guns, and potentially that's the case for the five hijackers as well. Either they were hired guns for something grander, or each had a part in a botched negotiations business deal and are blackmailed into doing this. Either way, next week is no doubt going to introduce these two individuals who were wrongfully accused, along with Marsha and Kai having to deal with the cleaners at their home. I'm guessing Marsha will hide from them, but Kai comes in with his headphones on, doesn't see or hear them, and they are both held captive, with maybe Daniel coming to their rescue? It would allow for Kai to actually like the guy, but also maybe a massive stretch, as that feels like a lot happening in these final three episodes. Anyway, that is everything from episode four of Hijack. This is hopefully moving things forward, especially with the demands letter we see at the end. But let us know everything that you thought of this episode, any sort of theories you may have in the comments below. Also, giveaway contests have started up as we will be giving away two copies of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 on the 15th of August. And all you gotta do to get a chance to win this is like this video, make sure to subscribe with notifications on, and drop a comment below with your thoughts on Hijack Episode 4. We'll pick the comments at random on the 15th of next month and the winners will be featured on screen then. Thank you again for watching through all of this. We'll be doing and hopefully an ending explained for Mission Impossible and of course our Hijack Episode 5 breakdown next week. So please like and subscribe if you haven't. It would be much appreciated. And if you haven't, check out all of my other social media accounts for my Shorts and Clips YouTube channel, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, everything. Please and thank you. Otherwise, that is everything I've got for you. Much love. Stay tuned. Hopefully you enjoyed that kosher meal. Yum, 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 yum.